Picture this. You're new to music, or a seasoned pro. You play the guitar, you play bass, the keyboard, the ukulele? No. You sing. No, I don't. Or maybe you play nothing, but you're dying to scratch that music making itch. Well, maybe this could be the door for you. And it's right here, on your iPhone or iPad, for free. Hey, James here. If you haven't already figured it out, or read the title of this video, today we're going to be talking about GarageBand for iOS. A free door on your iPhone, iPad, and iPod actually. So without any further ado, let's get on with the video. GarageBand comes with a host of instrument types. Let's quickly go through them now. We have the Keyboard, drums, amp, the audio recorder, strings, bass, guitar, world instruments from Japan and China, the smart drummer, external instruments, and finally, the sound library, where you can purchase a ton of packs for all of the aforementioned instruments. First, let's talk about the keyboard. This is probably the most versatile of the instrument types, with many sounds ranging from a basic piano to a string quartet, and from a deep sub bass to a massive dubstep growl. Also featured in this keyboard section is Alchemy, GarageBand's built-in synth. It's basically a stripped-back version of the Alchemy plugin that you'll find in Logic, with less options for sound moulding. The most you can do here is edit the pre-existing presets. This doesn't stop it from being powerful, however. The range of sounds you can get from this synth is astonishing. I've spent countless hours working my way through all of the presets available in the keyboard. There is truly something for everyone here, and if you're not happy with the sounds that you're getting from the keyboard, why not record your own with the sampler? You can also plug a MIDI controller into your iDevice and play all of the MIDI instruments with the keyboard, making it pretty useful for keyboardists in both a home studio and live setting. Now let's take a look at the drums. There are three main sections to the drums in GarageBand iOS. Smart drums, acoustic or electric drums, and the beat sequencer. The smart drums allow you to quickly add drum beats to your song in GarageBand. This feature has been made semi-obsolete by the smart drummer that I'll show off later in the video, though it can still provide fun and inspiration. Next, we have the acoustic or electric drums. These are quite self-explanatory. They are basic drum pads for playing acoustic and electric drums offered in GarageBand. Whilst I'm not very good at utilising the pads in my own songs, you can definitely master them and use them to great effect in your own composition. Finally, we have the beat sequencer, the most recent addition to the GarageBand drum section. The GarageBand drum sequencer is very in-depth with plenty ways to shape and sculpt your own sequences as well as a bunch of brilliant presets. Next up, the amp. This is where you can make use of an audio interface to add amp effects and pedals to your guitar or bass to be included in your song. There is a massive selection of amp sims and presets to choose from here. Personally, this is my favourite part of GarageBand. I've probably spent too long here playing with the presets and making my own presets. It's incredibly powerful and genuinely sounds superb. If you're a singer, or like to record real-life instruments with an external mic, or your device's built-in mic, you're going to spend a lot of time in the audio recorder. Being very honest, this used to be one of the more gimmicky sections of GarageBand, with only a handful of useful presets, with the rest only being fun until the novelty wears off. Now it actually has loads of useful presets for recording a horde of different instruments, with the gimmicky presets being saved for the fun section. Next up, we have GarageBand's host of smart instruments. The strings allow you to play all of the string instruments found in a traditional string quartet. 
The bass also has some cool presets from a P bass to some really 90s sounding synth basses. The smart guitar has some acoustic guitar presets as well as some software representations of some iconic guitars. And most recently, the world instruments with a selection of instruments from Asia were added. Whilst all of these are fun to play on their own, the real potential for musicians can be found once you enable their smart functionality. Pressing this button brings up the smart chord screen, a screen that is also accessible for the keyboard instrument. This screen allows anyone to play a selection of predetermined chords in a variety of ways, either by pressing them in different places to play different inversions, or by using the autoplay function to play MIDI patterns. For those that want to customise their chords, you can also use the edit chord section to create some fairly spicy chords. This is the function that really makes GarageBand iOS the most accessible door out there. The aforementioned smart drummer has kind of made the smart drums obsolete with way more options for customization. Each drummer plays a different kit with their own humanized grooves and there are loads to choose from with some drummers playing acoustic kits and others playing electric or percussion kits. Well, that's quite a lot of choice for instruments, but if you want even more instruments to play with, that's not a problem. GarageBand supports AUV3 and InterApp Audio, which means that you can use third-party instruments or apps inside of GarageBand, many of which are free to use. GB also comes with thousands of loops to boot, which can give you a great head start on your project or add a little bit of sparkle to your tunes. All of these loops can be added straight into your project. Or they can be added into the live loops. This is a completely different workflow to your standard project, with a focus on loops which can either be created by you or Apple. Once again, I've spent many many hours playing with the preset songs available, with dubstep, EDM and rock options being my personal favourites. The loops can either be activated on their own or in sections. Once you've started recording your songs, you'll need to start mixing it. And once again, GarageBand has you covered. Like all doors, GarageBand has volume sliders for each of the tracks, which can be adjusted up and down so you can get a good level for all of your parts. As well as this, GarageBand also features volume automation, allowing you to change the volume of your track as the song progresses. As well as this, GarageBand also features an effects track that allows you to add various effects to the project as a whole. There are ways to get the effects track to work on a single track, and I'll have a tutorial linked in the description below. GarageBand also comes with a host of plugins for mixing your tracks. 
the majority of these are extremely usable for people of all skill levels, with a couple of them being a tad anemic for more seasoned users. GarageBand comes with an inbuilt bit crusher, chorus, distortion, flanger, microphaser, overdrive, echo, reverb, tremolo, and vocal transformer, and a visual EQ. All of these can be located under the track settings menu. Whilst it is quite a selection, GarageBand does have even more plugins hidden away in your device's settings. Simply go to your settings, scroll down to GarageBand and enable iOS effects plugins, and boom! You have access to 15 other effects which can be found in the audio units extension segment. And once again, if you need more effects and plugins, these can easily be downloaded from the App Store. Some of these are really useful, whilst others are a little bit more experimental. So what are my final thoughts on GarageBand? Well, I don't think that it comes to as a surprise to anyone that I think GarageBand is bloody brilliant. It's incredibly accessible to people of all skill levels, making songwriting easier for everyone. There's still a learning curve like there is to every door, but the point of entry is much lower. More pro doors require you to know a lot more about music production, throwing you straight in the deep end, making creation confusing and frustrating. In the end, they might be more powerful than GarageBand, but that doesn't mean anything if you can't get creating to start with. Also, GarageBand iOS has the massive advantage of being portable. You can make music everywhere. Bedroom? Sure. Kitchen? Sure. Bus? Sure. And with that, we've come to the end of this rather long video. If you've managed to make it all the way to the end, thanks very much. It means a lot to me. What's your favourite part of GarageBand? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.